Gaultier's Gambit, A Tale of Dark Deceit, by Bernhard T. Raven. Chapter 1. Part 3. The Abbot. The Abbot of Saint-Germain-des-Prés, a tall, thin man with a stern face and piercing gaze, stood in his austere study, contemplating the dire news he had just received. A lifetime spent studying the scriptures had given him an air of authority that was hard to miss, and there was a hint of steel in his voice that spoke of hidden strength. This was a man who didn't suffer fools gladly and had little patience for those who strayed from the path of righteousness. A young monk, his face pale and contorted with fear, had burst into the abbot's chambers to report the unthinkable. The theft of the monastery's most precious relic, the arm of Saint-Germain-des-Prés. The abbot listened intently as the monk recounted the dreadful discovery, his mood darkening with each word. With a heavy heart, the abbot made his way to the crypt, accompanied by the trembling young monk who had brought the terrible news. The air was thick with the scent of damp earth and lingering incense as they descended the narrow stone steps into the dimly lit chamber. The abbot's eyes scanned the scene, searching for any clue that might reveal the identity of the thieves or the whereabouts of the stolen relic. But the crypt was undisturbed, save for the empty crystal sarcophagus where the arm of Saint Germain des Prés had once rested. As the abbot stood before the sarcophagus, a sense of dread washed over him. He knew that this theft was not only an attack on the monastery, but also a direct challenge to his own authority. As the man commissioned by Pope Clement to investigate irregularities related to the dissolution of the Order of the Temple, this theft would undermine his ability to carry out his mission. Go and fetch the prior and the brothers of the council. The abbot commanded the young monk, who immediately set off. The abbot gathered them in his study to discuss the situation. The flickering candlelight cast eerie shadows on the walls, creating an atmosphere of tension and unease. Gathered around a large wooden table, the abbot addressed his inner circle of trusted monks with a grave expression. Brothers, he began, his voice heavy with concern, I have summoned you here to inform you of a terrible crime that has befallen our monastery. The sacred arm of Saint-Germain-des-Prés has been stolen from our crypt. A collective gasp filled the room as the monks exchanged worried glances. The abbot continued, We must gather our thoughts and discuss the best course of action to recover the relic and restore our community's faith in our order. I understand that the path ahead may be fraught with challenges, but it is crucial that we work together to find a solution. Your wisdom, support, and guidance will be indispensable during these trying times. The monks listened in shock and disbelief as the abbot recounted the details of the theft and the enormity of the threat it posed to the monastery. As the monks gathered in the dimly lit chamber, their faces etched with concern, a somber discussion unfolded. The air was thick with anxiety as they considered the implications of the crime. One of the elder monks, his voice wavering, expressed his fears. The theft not only places the monastery's reputation in jeopardy, but also casts doubt upon our abbot's ability to fulfill his papal duties. Another monk chimed in, his voice laced with urgency. We must act swiftly and decisively to recover the arm of Saint Germain des Prés and restore the faith of our followers. We cannot afford to lose their trust or allow this sacrilege to tarnish our holy order. The monks nodded in agreement understanding the gravity of the situation. Their hearts were heavy, and their minds raced with thoughts of what the future might hold if they failed to rectify this terrible wrong. The shadows of doubt and fear loomed over their discussion as they sought a solution to the crisis that threatened to consume their beloved monastery. Perhaps we should consider enlisting the help of an outsider, someone who possesses the skills and knowledge necessary to recover the stolen relic and return it to its rightful place. The room fell silent as the others considered his proposal. Another monk, his brow furrowed, added, Yes, someone who is well-versed in navigating the criminal underworld and who can successfully complete this mission without attracting undue attention. The monks exchanged thoughtful glances, recognizing the merit of the suggestion. While it was an unorthodox approach, they knew that desperate times called for desperate measures. 
The hope of recovering the sacred relic now hinged on finding the right person for the task, someone who could navigate the treacherous path that lay ahead. The smoky haze of the room seemed to close in on them as the monks debated their options, their voices hushed and guarded. The abbot's thoughts turned to Gaultier, a man he knew had the unique abilities they needed. Gaultier, the former mercenary with a storied past whom he had hidden in a monastery in the Loire Valley from the grasp of his powerful enemies. His keen intellect and knowledge of the criminal underworld made him an invaluable asset in their time of need. The abbot believed that Gaultier was the key to solving this mystery and restoring the monastery's honor. With a nod of agreement from the assembled monks, the abbot made his decision. He would seek out Gaultier and entrust him with the monumental task of recovering the arm of Saint-Germain-des-Prés. Aware of the urgency and severity of the situation, the abbot retreated to his study and began to compose a letter. My dearest Gaultier, I hope this letter finds you in good health and high spirits. It is with great urgency and concern that I must reach out to you in these troubling times. I urgently need your help. He carefully explained the dire circumstances surrounding the theft of the arm of Saint-Germain-des-Prés, emphasizing the potential consequences the monastery would face if the relic were not recovered. The abbot knew that Gaultier's unique skills and knowledge of the criminal underworld made him the only one who could successfully complete this mission. But he also understood that asking Gaultier to confront his dark past was no small request. After completing the letter, the abbot summoned Agilbert, a warrior monk known for his unwavering loyalty and combat prowess. He handed Agilbert the sealed letter and instructed him to deliver it to Gaultier in the monastery in the Loire Valley, stressing the importance of the task at hand. Agilbert accepted the mission without hesitation, understanding the gravity of the situation and the trust the abbot placed in him. He saddled his horse and set off on the long journey to Gaultier's secluded monastery, bearing the weight of the abbot's plea and the future of Saint-Germain-des-Prés on his shoulders. As Agilbert disappeared over the horizon, the abbot could only hope that Gaultier would accept the mission and that they had not placed their faith in the wrong man. The fate of the monastery now rested in the hands of a man who had once walked the shadowy path of the criminal underworld a man whose past was as dark as the very shadows they sought to vanquish. You want to know how the story develops? Subscribe now.